Do you want a relationship in your life? Just straight up. Is it easy for you to admit that? Is it okay to admit that? I've been amazed. I've had more than one, more than three people actually this month alone who've come to work with me or talk with me in a one-on-one -on -one context and say, you know, when I start thinking about relationships or if I even try to bring it up in certain circles, sort of spiritual communities, inner work groups, things like that, or working with other teachers, it's met with this almost like, well, you know, you're not really supposed to want that or I'm not supposed to want that. I'm supposed to be happy by myself, right? I'm supposed to work on myself and be sort of self-fulfilled. I think this is a really dangerous thing, a very dangerous road to go down where the idea of a relationship is somehow like that's the needy thing. That's sort of not quite very good. Meanwhile, of course, it's one of the most fundamental things on our planet as human beings. But that resistance it's met with which then gets taken on internally, right? I'm not supposed to want that. I'm supposed to be totally self-sustained. There's two major problems with that. Actually, there's plenty more, but one of them is a very toxic concept that I'll get into in another video, which is this idea that a relationship is a reward after you do enough work on yourself. That happens a lot in this world of like inner work and emotional healing, right? Okay, I'm gonna focus on myself, which sometimes means I'm avoiding relationships, and once I'm finally kind of whole and healed, whatever that means, I am then rewarded with a great relationship. A relationship is not a reward after you've done enough work on yourself. The more you think about it that way, the more it can actually get put off into the future, whereas relationships can actually be a very essential and beautiful part of the process of working on oneself. I mean, I can say that as someone who's basically single my entire uh, New York career of over a decade, uh, and then in the last year, been married for a year now, and it's amazing, and it hasn't slowed things down, or, you know, it wasn't like, okay, I finally achieved some state. I actually met my wife when I was, like, in some of my most challenging phases of being physically injured and things like that. So the other problem with it, again, is this idea it perpetuates of, like, I'm not supposed to have something I want and really value in my life because I'm supposed to have achieved some sort of internal state or that it's a goal that's not a very worthy goal, right? It's sort of a silly thing. And you don't see it as much with things like money or career. You do in certain spiritual circles, like, oh, you shouldn't even talk about money. But I think that's becoming more outdated, thankfully. But this idea of I should not want, it's an attachment to want a relationship. But if you just want a career, like, yeah, go for it. Follow your dream, right? Turn your dream into a reality. But what if your dream includes having a, a great partner? Right. I recommend owning and embracing that because the people I talk to that want that, it's actually very clear, but you can feel the layers of sort of justification and explanation of like, well, you know, I feel like I want that, but I don't know if it's just my ego or I've had these bad relationships in the past. Maybe I need to sort of clear up all the past stuff around that. Look, you're going to get a lot of value out of doing inner work around your past relationships and what you're still holding on to, but you can still want and go for and have a relationship right now, even while that stuff is there. And your new amazing partner can be sort of part of the process, can help in the healing process. Not that you necessarily have to discuss it with them so directly, but maybe. But you know what I'm saying? To really own that I want a relationship, right? I want that. And anyone who's telling you otherwise or giving you a little bit of a vibe, like that's somehow of a lesser thing to want, <laughs> honestly, I would recommend just not even pursuing that or even cutting that role or that teaching or that philosophy out of your life entirely. If that's too extreme, you can maybe just ignore that part of it. Because again, I've had it more than once where people are saying this to me, that it's been a thing that's been almost imposed on them that they then take on, right? A relationship is a beautiful thing. You are allowed to want it. You're allowed to visualize it with clarity and intention. You're allowed to do inner work around what you feel might be stopping you from moving forward with that, any blocks and resistances, just like you do with money and career, but with the same level of ownership of, yeah, I really want that. This is what it would feel like in my life. This is why I want it. It's not weakness. It's not neediness. That's an insane idea, actually. If you think about how relationships really perpetuate the species and are like essential to business and everything else, right? A deep sort of intimate relationship with someone else is extremely valuable. 
extremely deep and can be extremely um, worthwhile in your process of working on yourself rather than being a future reward. So the final thought on that is to just make that part of your practice if it's something you want to recognize any challenges or resistances that come up from things you've been taught, things you've been told that say, you know, yeah, I shouldn't want that or that's somehow neediness. Give yourself a chance to kind of meditate on that. See through that, right? I, for example, like trying to do this YouTube thing, right? It's pretty new for me. It's not my full-time job, obviously not even close. It's a small channel, but I'm allowed to have clarity and say, okay, yeah, this is kind of what I want to do with this. I want to spend some time on it. I want to see where it goes. It's something I want in my life. Of course, I can be happy without it. I don't need to meditate and focus on, well, my life can be complete without a YouTube channel, so that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to focus on being whole and complete without it. Then I'm not making any videos. I'm not actually doing any of the things that turn it into a reality. So the two things can coexist, right? I can work on whatever attachments and resistances are going on in my life, but at the same time, I need to be clear and say, I want to do this. Otherwise, I'm not going to make any videos. It's just going to be, well, I should be happy without it. Of course I can be happy without it, but I need to take steps in order to do it. And it's very similar with relationships, right? Relationships can show up, people can show up, but I've found in myself and other people I've worked with more than once that when you own it and you do inner work like you do with other things, money, health, etc., that you can see the changes. You can see your energy change. You can see your uh, results change in terms of how open you are, how receptive you are to people what your personality turns into when you say, yeah, I want this, this is what I want. That clarity, other people can feel that. So I hope that helps. I'm happy to answer more questions, conversations about this because they usually come to me in private and it's with this tone of like, yeah, I kind of want a relationship. It's like, yeah, you really want one, I can feel it. And you should own it and embrace it because it's a beautiful thing to want and a beautiful thing to have, which you can. So hope that helps. Let me know any questions, comments. Talk to you soon.